Welcome. Well, you're at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family. And we are so delighted that you've welcomed us into your home. We know what a privilege and an honor it is to be there. We would love to hear from you, so send us an email with a question or a comment to Jim and Joy at EWTN. Dot com. And today, our guest is Father Ed Broom. He is a priest of the Oblates of the Virgin Mary. He is a speaker, a radio show host, a retreat master, and an author of several books, including the book that we're going to talk about today called A Roadmap to Heaven. And this book is available at EWTNRC.com. Well, we want to get to heaven, right? right? I mean, if I were to say to you, how many of you out there want to get to heaven? I would believe and hope and pray that all of you would say yes. Well, how do we get there? And we're going to have that conversation with ways and things that we can incorporate in our life that would make us holy on the journey, intimate with Jesus, and so that we would have that daily encounter, that wonderful rolling conversation, because the scriptures tell us to pray without ceasing. Yeah. And that's an <clears throat> ongoing conversation from the moment that we wake up yeah. until the time we go to bed. Yeah. So it's really an intriguing book, Roadmap to Heaven, A Catholic Plan of Life, A Catholic Plan of Life. And, uh, you know, I, as I was you know, thinking about this, I'm saying, well, a Catholic plan, getting to heaven, you know, is that a little works oriented? You know, I mean, is it too much works? But it's really a response. Mm -hmm. and, and we do, we are called to work. We're called to respond to the grace and the mercy of God. We're born again by water and the spirit, God's grace and mercy and baptism. But we are called to respond. And Father Broom here lays out, he says, hey, you need a plan for life. And what's, what's your latest plan, you know, for the year, for the month? for the week, for the day, mm -hmm. for the hour, and for the minute. You know, he goes through all of that. And, and the plan that he seems to share a lot about is, is a prayer plan, uniting yourself to the Lord at this point and stage in your life. And, and I, I like he speaks about making an oblation of your life, that your life is a living sacrifice. I guess that's what it says in Romans anyway, right? Present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. This is your spiritual worship. Are we presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice, our bodies, our souls, our spirits, our time? which we never get back again, minute by minute, moment by moment. And Father Broom really lays that out really well, makes you a little bit nervous, should make us a little bit nervous, you know, to say, God, what am I doing with my life? Are we really living our lives that, that we'll be face to face with love and justice and, and mercy and goodness and with the blessed mother, we'll see them all face to face. Do you have a plan for your life this year, this month, this week, this moment, so that when we depart this life, we won't shrink back. Mm. We won't shrink back to behold his appearing. Plenty more to come. We'll be right back with the roadmap to heaven. Don't go away. Well, you're at home with Jim and Joy, and it is our pleasure to bring to you Father Ed Broom. Now, he is a priest, a speaker, a radio show host, a retreat master, and an author of several books, including the book that we're going to talk about today, A Road Map to Heaven. And it's available at EWTNRC.com, and you could check out Father's website, Father Broom. Dot com. And it is, this book is a Catholic plan for life. Do you have a plan for your life? Are you just out there floating, going to and fro and mm -hmm. saying, well, I'm Catholic and I guess I'm going to get to heaven. I was baptized as a baby. How, but how are you forming yourself? How are you being formed? If you're a mother, how are you forming your children? Uh, if you're married, how, what's the culture of your marriage? What's the culture of your family in ways? And Father Broom is going to tell us all about it, and I'm excited. Well, Father, first we want to welcome you to At Home, and we're excited to have you. But we would like for you to tell our family a little bit first about yourself, and then we want you to tell us what is the heroic moment. 
Yes. I was actually born on February 29th, so I'm probably one of the youngest <laughs> priests in L.A. I'm 16 years old. <laughs> I'm a leap year baby. And I was called to become a priest when I was seven or eight years old. And it didn't become a reality until I went to Villanova University in Philadelphia and I got my degree in English literature. Then I was a teacher for a year in a place called King of Prussia. And then I read an article from the register about the Oblates of the Virgin Mary who had a house in Boston. So I visited them and I really liked their charism. The charism of the Oblates was great devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary. We're Oblates of the Virgin Mary. Then also our charism is preaching popular missions, fighting against current heresies, spreading good literature, the Apostle of Mercy through spending time in the confessional. My founder said the Oblates should be found dead in the, in the pulpit mm -hmm. or the confessional. Mm -hmm. And especially giving retreats, but Ignatian retreats. The Ignatian retreat could be a 30-day retreat, it could be an eight-day retreat, it could be a three-day retreat, or annotation 19, it could be a nine-to-month, nine-to-twelve-month retreat when you're meditating an hour every day. So I uh, traveled to Rome in 79. I studied at the Angelicum, the Pontifical University of St. Thomas Aquinas, and I was ordained uh, by Pope John Paul II, yeah. so I have holy hair, okay? <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a third class, class relic, relic because yeah. I was touched by John Paul II, <coughs> you can see the picture there. So in, uh, in a few, uh, few days, I'll actually be celebrating my 35th anniversary as a priest. Thank you. My superior sent me to Argentina and Chile for seven years, and I've been working in California for the past 27 years. So that's kind of a summary oh. of, of who I am. Well, thank you, Father. Thank you for your, your yes and for loving the Bride of Christ the way you do. And I know you've written a number of books here, and we've got your latest, Roadmap to Heaven, A Catholic Plan of Life. And I know at some point you're going to zoom in mm -hmm. on a kind of hourly the hourly plan you speak about, an annual plan, a monthly plan, a weekly plan, a daily plan, an hourly plan, and yes, actually a minute by minute kind of plan for your life. But just give us, if you would, just kind of, a, you know, the center of the book. What, what, what is the aim of this book? What is a, a plan for life? I know you've got kind of a chronological plan, you've got a vocational plan, but, but what will people find when they come to this book? Well, we have to start off with a basic idea in Ignatian spirituality. It's called principle and foundation. And it's we have to know why we're here. What is the purpose of our life? Many people have what are called an existential crisis. They really don't know where they came from, where they're heading, where they're going, and how to arrive. I like to say a lot of people are kind of like a chicken with his head cut off. Mm -hmm. Kind of like a, a dog running after his tail. Kind of like a sailor in the midst of the sea without a port. Kind of like an, an archer that has bow and arrow but there's no target. Or someone that's traveling without a GPS ends up getting lost because he has no orientation. Yes. So this book sets the stage to help us to arrive at the purpose of our existence. And St. Ignatius says we're created to praise God, mm. reverence God, serve God in this life so as to be happy with him forever in heaven. Mm -hmm. yes. The Baltimore Catechism put it this way. We're here to know God, love God, serve God in this life so as to be happy with him forever in heaven. Yes. So those two basic catechetical spiritual principles are the foundation of this book. Yes. Once you understand that philosophical theological foundation, then as you mentioned, I give different practices. I actually have three different plans of life. One is chronological, okay. another is professional, and I actually gave a plan of life uh, for the 
teenagers yes. is called the 5M. I forgot that one. I, I did see that. Um, yeah, I like the uh, global positioning system, the GPS. I call it the God positioning system. G, ah. G for God. <laughs> and, and I think that's what you're doing. I think that's what this is a God positioning book, right? I mean, yes. we're positioning ourselves because, because God first positioned himself. Right? He's God. We're not God. And for many of us you know, who've been baptized, most of us as infants, God's, you know, positioning us for blessing, but how are we positioning ourselves? I mean, how do we get in relationship? How do we follow that positioning that God wants for that for us? How do we know that? Through prayer, through scripture, through a spiritual director, through whomever, through our, our priests. And that seems to me to be what you're calling us to in this book. Are you going to get there? Are you going to follow the directions that the Lord is giving to you? And then you go through this, as you said, with a chronological plan, uh, planned for those who are religious, uh, priests, moms, dads, and like you said, you even have something for, for youth there. And it's, uh, I, I tell you, I got a little bit scared as I, we were reading the book through, you know. You, you were given this kind of illustration of, of somebody watching the, a river and the water's going down and a second passes and a minute passes. And oh, it felt so good when I was doing that. And then you said, you're never going to get that time back again. <laughs> yes. um, you know, it's, it's, it's just, that, that's what time is. Mm. Now, not that you shouldn't be watching the water, but that, you know, time is passing by. Do you understand? Do you realize that you only have a certain amount of time to, to be in position with the Lord? And, and that, it, it sh you should have a holy fear, but it should also be a great joy, you know, for you. And then you're giving us so much to kind of position ourselves properly. Yes, I think, Jim, what you just said is key, and it's the idea of eternity. Uh, Our Lady of Fatima said that if people would think about eternity, they would be converted mm. quickly. Yes. Think about how short time is. The psalm says, our life on earth, we're like the lily of the field that rises its head in the morning and withers and dies as the sun goes down. Mm -hmm. And St. Augustine says this, our life in comparison with eternity is a mere blink of the eye. Yes. So how short life is. St. Yeah. Peter Canisius, a great Jesuit doctor of the church, was working very hard, and someone said, slow down and rest. And he said, I'll have all eternity to rest. Right. Mm -hmm. St. Alberto Hurtado, a Chilean Jesuit priest, said that there are two places to rest the cemetery in heaven. Mm, yes. So in the meantime, it's time to work. Yeah. As Paul says, work out our salvation with fear and trembling. So that's the theological, philosophical foundation of the book. Then as you mentioned, I give a lot of different practices in which um, we can try to live this out. Father, I and want... And the practices... Mm -hmm. Yes, Joy. I, I want you to tell our family about the practices that you were sharing but one about that heroic moment, because we want to start and we want to start off right. Tell our family about that. This would be the hourly yes. per mm -hmm. time period mm -hmm. that you speak about, Father, hourly by hour by hour. Yes, we're going to take like the day and kind of divide it into different segments. And the uh, heroic moment is actually taken from the founder of Opus Dei, Jose Maria Escobar Balaguer, and he actually, he has that terminology, he calls it the heroic moment, and it means this, as soon as you hear uh, the alarm clock, okay, there's, uh, you might say there's a two standards, the standard of the good spirit and the standard of the bad spirit. The bad spirit says, well, hit the snooze button and sleep a little bit longer because you're really tired. Whereas the good spirit says, okay, you've heard the alarm clock. God speaks to you through the alarm clock. So get out of bed and to offer your first fruits to God. As Jim, you said, an oblation. What is an oblation? Oblation is you're giving yourself as a, an offering, a sacrifice to God. So getting out of bed right away and saying your morning offering. And what you're doing is you're giving yourself to the sacred heart of Jesus through the Immaculate Heart of Mary. You're giving your, your eyes, your mind, your heart, your body, your soul, mm. your past, your present, your future. You're giving everything to Jesus through the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And, 
And as the Curie of Ars says, St. John Vianney says, if you start off well your day by giving yourself to God, there's a good chance that you're going to end it well. Mm -hmm. So we have to conquer ourselves at the very first moment by not giving in to the capital sin or sloth or laziness. Yes. yes. And, and I guess as well, you also hit on, Father, I guess there's at least three options, right? S sloth, as you said, laziness, you know, we don't get up. And the other one is to get up and be super, super busy. You know, there's a lot of things I got to do. I got to read all my emails. I got to do this. I got to do that. And then the other one is what's called the heroic, you know, option, which is to be still and to know that he is God, to come to him, to come to the quickest way to him, the Blessed Virgin Mary. So speak as well about, uh, you know, being lazy or, or putting off, really getting up. And then the other one is, oh, yeah, I'm ready and I'm raring to go. Uh, but, but the Lord and intimacy with him, consecration to him, that offering to him comes later after I do these other busy things, worldly things, or maybe even some good things, but they're not about the Lord. Yeah, that's a good point, Jim, because I think in the American society, we have a real tendency to what is called activism. Uh, John Paul II calls it horizontalism. I would actually call it Marthaism. Mm. You can read Martha in Luke chapter 10. She was busy about many things. And Mary was sitting at the feet of Jesus, listening to Jesus, contemplating the face of Jesus, loving Jesus. So there's a real danger in our society to cave in to activism. Yeah. But the first commandment, and this is the essence of my book, is we have to love God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. And that's going to be manifested by giving ourselves to more serious prayer life. And this plan of life, I'm just marking certain times of the day in which we should stop and lift up our minds and heart to God and, and talk to God because He's the reason why we're here. He's the purpose of our existence. And He should be motivating all of our thoughts, words, and desires. So I, I think your question or your comment is very good. We're really in the danger of falling into activism or horizontalism yeah. as John yeah. Paul II. Yeah. So that, that first moment, that heroic moment is really critical. I always think about it like how you button your buttons, like I buttoned my button wrong, but I got it right for the show. So when you button your button, if it's wrong, all the other buttons are wrong. And you, you think you're looking pretty good and everything's okay, but you were really lazy in the morning or you just got busy with busy things instead of the most important thing, the most important one. So how you button your button is really critical. Everything else goes that way, your day goes that way. So what's the next step that you take, Father? I think you go to nine o'clock, you speak about the Angelus possibility. Be yes, yes, uh, I really encourage uh, our people to have a great devotion to Mary. And there are certain times during the day in which you can lift up your mind and heart to God through the prayer, it's called the Angelus. During the Easter season, we actually pray what's called the Regina Celi. And the Angelus can be said in two or three minutes. And the Angelus summarizes the two principal foundational truths of our, our Catholic faith. And it, what it is, is the incarnation of the Son of God through the yes of Mary, where Mary says, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord, be it done to me according to thy word. Then the last part of the Angelus, we say that through his passion and death, we would be brought to the glory of the resurrection. So if we can say that at 9 o'clock, we're calling to mind Mary's yes in the history of salvation, which resulted in what is called the incarnation of the Son of God. And then when we celebrate Holy Week, his passion, death, and his resurrection. So I encourage our people to pray the angels. If you can't say it exactly at 9 o'clock, okay, maybe it can be at 8.30 or 10 o'clock, but to have certain times during the course of the day in which we're stopping and we're lifting up our, our minds and hearts to God. And that's the definition of prayer that you have in the Catechism of the Catholic Church from St. John Damascene. Prayer is lifting up your mind mm. and your heart to God. So the angelus. Yeah, it's like the Sursum Corda kind of lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord, mm. we say during Mass. But you're saying, hey, at various points in the day, intentionally, willfully, here's some prayers I recommend. Maybe you have something else or a prayer you'd like, um, but 
you know, lift up your hearts. You know, Joy and I was speaking about, you know, in another show, how you know, I walk and jog each day and so on. And periodically, God says to me, I feel like he says to me, Jim, you're always looking down. And that's okay. I mean, you got to look where you're walking or you look straight ahead. That's good. He said, look up at the sun. Look up at the sky. Look up at me. Yes. Lift your head up. And so that's kind of what you're getting to at various points in the day, intentionally and willfully lift yourself up to the Lord. Yeah, and Father, I, you know, in the book, it was, we were made so aware of wasted time and just not being a good steward. And I think that your book awakens our hearts and minds and spirits to say, am I really being a good steward of my time? Because I need to know, you asked the greatest question, you answered the greatest question, what, why did God make me? What is my purpose? Why am I here? And then to connect with that, to know what our purpose is and to not be wasteful of the minutes of the day. And this is just the way that you're doing, informing that and in guiding us and assisting us to say, we need to be arrested. Our flesh needs to be arrested. Our thoughts need to be arrested. Um, our, even the tasks that we do, we need to bring them under the authority of Christ. Yes, and our model, of course, is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He spent 30 years in Nazareth, which was, he worked, but he spent a lot of time in prayer. Then once he goes out into his public life, what does Jesus do? He's baptized, then he spends, he spends time in prayer, that month of prayer and penance in which he's tempted by the devil. So... Yes, uh, life is very, very short, and we don't believe in reincarnation. We don't believe in that. We believe in, we have one life, and in the spiritual exercises program, I spend a lot of time talking to people of what are called the last things. It's called in theology, eschatology. The last things would be the reality of death, judgment, heaven, hell, and purgatory, Father, we're gonna have as to, well as the reality of eternity. Thank mm -hmm. you, Father. We're going to have to hold it there because these are the last things before our break. <laughs> and we look forward to Great. continuing. Good the, timing. <laughs> look forward to continuing the conversation tomorrow with Father Broom. You can go to fatherbroom.com. We'll be right back. There's plenty more to come. Please don't go away. Jim and Joy, and we had a great conversation with Father Broom. You know, he was really sharing, and, and I hope that you too at home got, there is urgency in our living, um, and that we need to think of not the beginning of our life or how we're doing in our life, but we need to think of the end of our life, and, and where do we want to spend eternity? Because mm -hmm. this life is short, but eternity is is a long time. And so where, where does your goal, how are you going to get there? And Father gave so many beautiful word pictures, you know, that you would be like a sailor out on a ship without a port. You And he, you were like, yeah, that would be awful. Or I always think of like back in the day before we had GPSs, like it makes no sense to go on a road trip if you don't know where you're going. You're not going to travel a thousand miles without a destination. Sometimes that's our lives. Yeah. Sometimes that's you, sometimes that's me. We're doing the day. We have no destination that we would have an intimate encounter with Jesus by the end of the day and hopefully be more conformed into mm -hmm. his image. You know, I'm just thinking of that kind of like joke where the wife is saying to the husband, you, you know, you never, you haven't told me that you love me. So I told you on the day I married you, I love you, you know. <laughs> Mm -hmm. and, and that's that's what he that's said. That's not you. you know, every day you have to say, I love you. I, I rededicate my life. And that's what the roadmap to heaven is. That we're saying to the Lord, we're lifting up our hearts to the Lord and saying, I love you. I adore you. I sacrifice my life to you, Lord. I want to spend all eternity with you. I want to, to, to be dressed beautifully when you see me, Lord. I want to be, you know, I don't want to shrink back to behold you appearing. I want, want, I want to be all that you want me to be. And that's what roadmap to heaven, a Catholic plan of life, Father Ed Broom is all about. And so we pray that you're being built up in the faith, 
EWTN is here with you to get you to heaven with the Lord Jesus mm. Christ. Keep it on EWTN. You're never alone. You're always at home with Jim and with Joy. Bye now.